because p- people aren't going to take this this issue seriously. They're not going to take this movement seriously if you're constantly pandering to people's feelings. What other movement of justice panders to people's feelings over spreading the truth? What other movement does that? Black rights movement? Women's rights movement? Gay rights movement? Who does? Who, which movement does that? Should the animal rights movement pander to people's feelings? Should it? Well, uh, not while I'm around. <laughs> Thank you very much for your support. After watching you, I learned a lot on communication, and since then, my parents and brother have went vegan. Good friends around me. Well, that's good. I'm glad. Look, I want to say this to people who criticize my approach constantly. I can do whatever approach I want. I can I can do certain different approaches, and there are certain times that call for certain different approaches. But when you get me out there on the street, like, look, it's me and a stranger. I'm giving them the no BS, direct, straight to the point hard truth but when you get me talking to like a friend of a friend and it's a different setting and it might be a personal environment you know yeah i i I adapt my approach you know what i mean but when you're going to talking about public activism you know creating a civil disobedience direct action you know um heavy duty debate where there's four or five people coming into me then of course i adapt my approach um that's just me but I'm, i'm obviously a little bit more blunt and straightforward than than others and you just adapt your, the approach to your personality. Don't ever forget the animals. Don't apologize for being vegan. Don't apologize for speaking out against animal abuse. But, you know, if you want it to land a little bit more softly, get it to land a little bit more softly. That's all. That's all. Mate, you can sit there and criticize my approach all day. Can't say it doesn't work, though. They might have a little bit of the stick up their bum, like they might be a bit angry with me at the start. But when the truth sinks in, they'll realize that what I'm saying is true. And that's the main thing, is what you're saying true. Um, cause that anger isn't going to be there forever. Like people think, oh yeah, this, a vegan made me angry. That anger is going to subside and they're going to come to their senses and realize that they've been wrong their whole life and vegans are right and they should stop abusing animals and go vegan. You know, look, I got taught by one of the, the most experienced activists of all time, Gary Urofsky. He said, don't try to be a politician. We've got enough politicians who bullshit people, all right? We're not politicians. We're not trying to sell you anything. We're trying to speak up for animals, okay? We don't need everyone to be our friends, okay? We're friends to the animals. Don't need. I don't need you to like me. Don't need everyone to like me. You might, you might like me just as a result of me being honest to you. True friends are honest to, to other people. Like, if you're a true friend, you're honest. Like if you've got a boogie in your nose, if you've got some something on your face, a true friend will say, hey, there's some shit on your face, wipe it off. You know, that's a true friend. And, and you know, a fake friend will let you walk around with that boogie hanging out your nose the whole time. So I mean, that's a pretty funny analogy, but it's true. You Anyone's got that friend who's just straight out honest with them and goes, oh, mate, that guy you're with is a piece of shit. Or, you know, that change that T-shirt, it looks shit. Or that haircut, really, they mess that up. But, you know... Obviously, there's a time to like be soft and, you know, be a little bit strategic and stuff like that. You know, you don't really walk around telling the God honest truth all the time. But with certain things, it's important to speak truthfully. Um, And it doesn't always mean be rude. Look, sometimes I'm a bit ruder than others. Like sometimes I just had enough. You know, it's just we're all human beings. Just do your best. Do your best. Like, don't think that you have to have some perfect, clear cut, amazing, articulate, you know, cool, calm, collected approach at all times. It's just not realistic, right? It's not human. It's not human. Um, so I want you to know anyone can be an activist. Anyone. Don't matter who you are, what your approach is, how you talk, whether you've got a vast vocabulary, whether you're a super intellectual, logical magician, or whether you're just a stock standard person who's very simple, who says things clearly and simply. It's a very simple topic. Animal cruelty is one plus one equals two. It's not some, you know... It's, it's not some equation you have to try to work out. It's just like, let's just keep it simple. Let's keep it simple. Um, another thing I want to talk about is um, we've got to make eating animal products socially unacceptable. That's one thing. We have to make eating animal products socially unacceptable. Now, are we going to get there by going, oh, it's okay. You, you, one step towards vegan is fantastic. Good work. Yes, yeah, stay vegetarian. That's fine. No, don't worry about the dairy cows being raped and murdered. No. Okay. Making 
eating animal products and using animal products socially unacceptable takes a certain type of stance. And uh, uh, we, we have a zero tolerance, zero tolerance to animal abuse, zero tolerance to the animal holocaust. Okay, so when you see those fur activists out there and they're going, you know, um, fur trade is the death trade. Animal abusers wear fur. Okay, what are they doing? Do you think that they're just doing that because they're angry? They're doing that for a certain reason, and it's to make wearing fur socially unacceptable. So that they're shaming people for wearing fur. They're shaming people. Now, don't get me wrong. Is it, is it always the right time to shame someone? No, no. But let's just sign. But but people should definitely. Like, there's certain ways to go about it. Obviously, like, hey, you know, you're abusing animals when you consume these products. You know, if you feel ashamed about that, I did. That's why I changed. Come on, I felt guilty and ashamed of you know. And some innocent animal I'd never met been chopped up on a plate for me, and I'm making them part of my digestive system, you know, putting them in down, the, flushing them down the toilet. That's how much contempt animals were treated. Uh, I was treating animals with when I was consuming them, them and their products, their byproducts. So, so, so think about the psychology of making something socially unacceptable. Think about that psychology. Like, well, do we need a bunch of, you know, animal rights activists who were so tolerant? of animal abusers that they walk around on egg eggshells trying not to trying not to um, upset anyone how, what type of how are you going to make animal products socially unacceptable like that you know you can make people wake up and you know curiously think and go wow well you left me with a good, really good thought but you're going to leave them with this feeling of guilt for some innocent pig being gas chambered on their behalf how do you leave someone how do you leave someone with a real feeling like compelled to change. How do you leave someone with that feeling? So that, that, that's, that's, that's what I want you to ask yourself. That's what I want you to ask yourself. I changed because of guilt. When I was a gang member and doing bad things and out there beating people up and, you know, taking drugs and my mother's crying and, you know, you know, I was hurting my family around me and, you know, you know, I, a lot of my change came from the guilt associated with what I'd done. And wanting to do better, you know, if you've got some money in your hand and you're paying someone at the supermarket to go and then pay a slaughterhouse to cut an animal up into a million pieces so you can turn them into your poo, so you can turn them, so you can flush them down the toilet, right? And you don't have no guilt associated with that. The, the last person who should make you feel comfortable about that is an animal rights activist. The last person on earth who should make you feel comfortable about consuming animal products it should be an animal rights activist. For anything, you should be around animal rights activists going, I feel a bit uncomfortable about, you know, eating this tortured dead animal body or consuming dairy products stolen from a suffered mother, you know? So that's what, I want to cultivate an uh, activist like that, you know? And uh, that doesn't mean just calling everyone an F and this and F and that or whatever, but, you know, there's certain ways you go about it. But I think... Um, Showing that you're not here to enable animal abusers is good. Is good. Yeah, we, we have a no to zero tolerance to it, and uh, yeah, we're make going to make it socially unacceptable. You know, why shouldn't there be um, like they do with the the fur protests out the front of you know places that are selling dairy products? The the moral implications of dairy products is the same as fur. For some reason fur fur protests. Most of the meat eating public are on board with fur protests. They think uh, fur is abhorrent and unnecessary and cruel. Well, guess what? So is dairy, meat, and eggs. Most of the meat-eating public think, you know, the dog meat trade in Yulin is unnecessary and cruel. Well, guess what? So is the dairy industry. So is the egg industry for the exact same reasons. They torture, exploit, and kill animals. So that's what I want people to think about. Think about that. Think about how to make eating animal products, using animal products, wearing animal products socially unacceptable. And that's how you change society. And that's how, like, you think like, you know, I don't know, civil rights activists, people are against racism. Come on. You, you, racism is socially unacceptable. So it should be. It's evil. Racism is evil. You know, sexism is socially unacceptable. What you think, you know, um, homophobia, things like that. These are socially unacceptable now. There was a time when that was absolutely fine. No, not, not now. Exactly. Because you're going to get called out for homophobia and all these things. And rightly so. Rightly so. So same with animal abuse. We have to treat it like that. Treat it like that, especially the activists, especially those who are against what happens to animals. It's, don't be afraid of speaking your mind about it. 
So if you see me like in my recent video, that's me at the supermarket making animal products socially unacceptable. I'm saying it's disgusting. So an animal's tortured and killed so you can eat their flesh. It's disgusting. No, I, I wouldn't... Like, that's not a time for me to use a Socratic method, even though, like, I've been a proponent of the Socratic method since I started. I Like, I'm not going to go up to people in the supermarket when we're doing that type of direct action and go, do you think this is disgusting? No, I'm going to tell you it's disgusting, because it's obvi it, it obviously is. It's cruel, abusive, and disgusting. All right? Simple. People get offended because intrinsically they're good people, so their, conscious, their, their conscience bothers them. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And they might get angry at the person speaking the message instead of the message itself. Uh, that's probably an e to, It's easier to attack the messenger than to attack the message. Okay. So people go to me, oh, Joey, you're a, who are you to talk? You're an ex gang member. You used to take drugs. You used to deal drugs. You, you're a bad person before, so you can't tell us anything now. So what, what has that got to do with abusing animals? You just said four things about me, nothing about the chopped up animal that's on your plate. It's an exit strategy. It's like, it's a way around being accountable. That's what they're trying to do. Um, but for me, if someone was straight up to me, you know, straight up to me saying, Joey, you know, you're paying for those products, abusing animals. You're an animal abuser, bro. There's no way, there's no way around it. You got to stop. You got to stop. You got to go vegan, man. If you, if you care about what happens to those animals in that slaughterhouse, which I know you do, which I did, I did. I cared about animal cruelty, but no one was there holding me accountable for it. That's the problem. We've got a society full of animal abuse enablers and we don't want a vegan movement full of animal abuse enablers okay that's what we don't want we don't want to cultivate activists who enable animal abusers especially like um vegetarian walk past you know she goes i'm vegetarian what you're doing is good and i said only animal abusers buy dairy now if someone wants to pay lip service to what we're doing while they're walking past I, I couldn't care less about lip service. I couldn't care less. I want you to stop uh, supporting the industries that abuse and kill animals. Now, of course, I would prefer like the meat-eating population to support what we're doing, but their lip service doesn't do shit for the animals. Just, just saying, I support what you do, but I'm not a vegan, that doesn't do shit for the victims. The victims don't care whether you say you support what we do, but you actually your actions oppose what we do. Your actions are, are literally paying for the Holocaust of animals. So a veg vegetarian walking past going, great, I'm a vegetarian, great work. What What is that really doing for animals other than them feeling good about themselves when they go and buy a bottle of milk, which is paying for the, the, the most horrific cruelty on earth? People say, well, give vegetarians a, give vegetarians a break, Joey. Give vegetarians, what do you mean give break? vegetarians are a non-vegan they're doing when, when you're a vegan look you're doing your it's the least you can do basically being a, ve a vegan is the least you can do you're not paying for dairy you're not paying for for fur you're not paying for leather you're not paying for obvious black and white cruelty issues okay these these aren't gray areas these aren't gray areas so you know if you're vegetarian you already made enough of a change to kick meat but why are you hanging on to eggs and dairy seems selfish to me if you know that you know 50% of the, the beef is coming from slaughtered dairy cows, so you're supporting the beef industry. Where do you think uh, egg-laying hens go after they're, they're finished laying eggs for you? They go to the slaughterhouse. All them male chicks that have been macerated alive for vegetarians, like, we shouldn't treat this any differently. That's what I'm saying. We shouldn't treat it any differently. If you're vegan for the animals, you're vegan for the animals. You know, you're not vegan for vegetarians, and it shouldn't, you know, and me, for me, I, I wasn't vegetarian before I went vegan. Um... I had this feeling like, you know, I, I got the message in a very apologetic way and it took me six months to change. <laughs> so that just gives you an idea of what apolog ap apologetic health activism, he health advocacy does. Plant-based health advocacy he wasn't compelling me to change. It was like, do this for your health, you know, but live and let live kind of thing. And it took me six months to change. But if I heard, heard Gary Yarovsky that first week, <laughs> I would have been a vegan. I could, I mean, I could only say I would have been a vegan if I heard Gary Yarovsky's speech, seen him show the slaughterhouse footage, talk about the animal holocaust, you know, calling me straight out the way he does in his poetic way. Mate, I would never have gone back. So just because certain forms of activism, you know, might be a ticket, just because, so, like, let's just say health advocacy, environment advocacy, it's like sort of that, that, that hooks them in to a certain group. Then they find the animal rights message after being hooked in by these other other issues. 
if they found the animal rights message strong first, you don't think that's going to work? If they get interested in health, right, then they find the animal rights message and they go vegan. What's to say that that pe person isn't susceptible to the animal rights message anyway? Of course they are. Of course they are. That's why they go vegan. Um, they might find the health message first, but they only go vegan when they find the animal rights message. That's how it works. And I would have too, because I know, because it took me six months to change after getting the health message. And it, I just wasn't compelled to change for ethics. I was doing it for, I was doing juice fasting and all this, eating more fruits and vegetables and eating, still eating chicken for protein and all that. No one told me chickens are being tortured and abused for me and it's my fault. You know, I wish I did. I wish I did. I would have definitely moved faster. Definitely moved faster. And when you, when people go, oh, this baby steps approach, baby steps, this and that. No, no. Adults take adult steps. Um, baby steps are for animal abusers who are being complacent. You know? Yeah, but I'm going to talk more, a little bit more about making animal abuse socially unacceptable, making animal products socially unacceptable. You know what I mean? Like we are so, kind of doing it, but more, more so like fair activists do, you know what I mean? You know, like really unacceptable. Like it's animal abuse to buy animal products. It's animal abuse to buy dairy. You know, it's animal abuse to buy packets of eggs. Why isn't it? Why isn't it? Why is fur animal abuse, right? Why is testing on animals, on, on monkeys in a lab animal abuse? But why isn't buying eggs animal abuse? Free range eggs, where male chicks are macerated. Macerating male chicks for free range eggs. You know, like vegetarian buying free range eggs. Why isn't that animal abuse? Just like if, you know, a plant-based, so a plant-based for health goes and buys a fur coat, you know, plant-based for health, but goes and buys a fur coat. You're going to say, well, wait a second, that ain't a vegan. That is an animal abuser. You know? But um, yeah, that's why, you know, plant-based is good. It's good. But when you go and buy leather, fur coat, animal tested products, go to the circus in a zoo and you eat plant-based diet, you're not a vegan. You're not a vegan. You're not a vegan. Sorry. You're just not. But I'm not sorry because you're not. Um, but it's, it's good. 97% of the cruelty on earth, I don't know what that statistic is, probably more like 99% of the cruelty, meat, dairy, and eggs on earth. Meat, dairy, and eggs, fishing industry. Fishing industry probably accounts for, you know, 85% of it. You know, the three, one to three trillion animals that are tortured and killed. So f fishing industry, huge. But you got to remember they're being ground up into pellets, fed to farm fish, ground up into pellets, fed to land animals. Those, those uh, wild uh, caught fish, ground up into pellets, fed to land animals. So yeah, yeah. So although like people might say, yeah, Joey, you're too harsh, you're too harsh. No, not at all, not at all. Because there's a difference between an animal rights activist and plant-based for health. There's just a, there's a massive difference there. Now, now am I, I'm gonna am I gonna throw stones at someone who goes, oh, I went plant-based? I'm not gonna. No, of course I'm not gonna throw stones at them. And, like you know, but I still would educate them into saying like, yeah, that plant-based is great, you know. But you got to stop buying leather and you know wool and down. Those industries torture animals as well. You know, um, as well, people, I, I think they mean well, right? And they just, they want to be nice and that. But when you say, um, when you say it doesn't matter what reason they're vegan for, I think that's a massive error. Because you can only be vegan for run, one reason. You can't be vegan for health. You can be plant, you can eat, you can eat a diet that is vegan for your health. You can eat a diet that is vegan. You know, if you're eating a fully plant-based diet, you can, your diet can be vegan, but your clothes can be made of skin. <sighs> you know, your products can be tested on every single animal's face in the universe. You can have a puppy mill breeding puppies, skinning those puppies and making jackets out of them, and your diet is vegan. That's what a plant-based for health is. So when, uh, you know, you can be plant-based for the environment as well. Yo, hell, you can stop eating beef and eat chicken for the environment. Beef's got a bigger carbon footprint. What does that mean for the animals? More chickens murdered? Yeah, that you can be. You can only be vegan for the animals. Okay, I can't say it enough. You can only be vegan for the animals. You can eat a plant-based diet, which is cutting out a lot of the cruelty. Don't get me wrong, a lot of the cruelty. If everyone, if everyone was food vegans, a lot of the the industries, like the majority, like food vegans, no fish, no meat, you know, no dairy, no eggs, no honey. A lot of those industries that like most of the cruelty on earth would cease. But then, you know, the reality is we're not going to have everyone be food vegans at once. We're going to have people who 
a vegan eat, eating vegan food and still buying leather and still buying you know down pillows they probably they don't realize they go and buy a pillow and it's full of the feathers of some duck that was tortured so if we're not giving people the right message and are they going to are they going to be compelled enough to stay vegan think about that think about that if you're eating plants for your health i wasn't i'm i'm walking proof and i'm an anecdote but when I, I um, started looking at uh, the raw food as stuff and I started losing weight and it was all about weight loss, all about weight loss. I felt really good, clarity. So I was doing juice fasting. I was eating steamed vegetables. I felt good, right? Started eating chicken breast when I started doing weights, you know? So I was eating vegetables and chicken breast. And in prison, I was eating vegetables, fruits, chicken breast and skim milk, boiled eggs, you know? I was eating predominantly healthy whole foods and eating those animal products for protein because I was training. Because I didn't know about the cruelty in these industries. You know, and I wasn't compelled to stay plant-based because I didn't have the education. I wasn't being held accountable. I didn't see slaughterhouse footage. Okay? I didn't hear Gary Yurofsky. I didn't hear... A Joey Carbstrong. I didn't hear a Paul Bashir. So yeah. So and a lot of it is lack of education, you know. And they they just hear the message and they think, oh well, food that that's the most obvious thing. And we the reason I talk about food the most is because that's where most of the cruelty is. That's where most of the cruelty is. But the leather industry is huge. Leather industry is huge. I think when you get the right message right, and you look at it from the the justice issue, you look at it as an issue uh, as a. Uh, as animal exploitation, as an issue of injustice, you treat it like any other justice issue. You don't practice it sometimes. You don't have exceptions here and there. You're just like, it's wrong. It's always wrong. What's that? What's that coat made out of? You know, what's what's that pillow made out of? Is that wool? Is that wool? Is that made from a sheep? You know, you, you check into everything. You know, because all you need is that one core message, and it extends out to all the products, not just your food. It extends out. To, you know, you're not going to buy from a puppy breeder. You're not gonna go to the circus because you, you've had that one core message and that's what keeps you vegan in all other aspects forever. You know, unless you're a flake who just don't give a fuck about animals and you just fall off the wagon and you don't care. But yeah, for the most part, good-hearted people, when they get the, the right message, they're gonna help the environment and their health as well, but they're gonna stay vegan and not buy, buy all the other products that harm animals as well. And more often than not, when you give someone the right message, they give that right message to other people. So they don't go out and go, oh, no, it's okay, eggs here and there's okay, oh, no, just do your best, uh, plant-based 90% of the time, yada, yada, yada. No, they go out and they start speaking for animals when you give them the right message. That's why my message has always been, you get me on TV, I'm talking about gas chambers, I'm talking about animal exploitation, the rape in the dairy industry. You give someone the right message, right, especially someone in a position like I am where I've got lots of people listening to me, they go out and give other people the right message and it, and it, you know, it leaves sort of it sends waves of the right message to people, and you have and you 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 cultivate a community of animal defenders, of animal rights activists. Okay, not people who are going, oh yeah, no, nah, really. Here's a pat on the back for being vegetarian on a Tuesday. No, they'll say no. Animal abuse is always wrong, and you have to you have to go vegan. If you're not going vegan, you're abusing animals, and it has to stop. You know, so that's the type that's the type of rhetoric we need. You know, it has to be, like I said before, socially unacceptable. We need more activists. We need more activists. We need more activists. And the only way you get more activists is by making vegans vegan with the right message. The right message about the animals. Keep it about the animals. And guess what? When people get the right message and they, they go vegan, 100% vegan for the animals, that's good for the environment too, isn't it? Because the industries that are destroying the, uh, the environment are the same ones who are raping and killing the animals. Okay. So focus on the, the, the root cause of the destruction of the environment. The root cause is people's, you know, thinking animal exploitation is fine. And then they support these industries that are destroying the environment and torturing and killing animals. You know what I mean? So you might think, oh, Joey, you don't talk about the environment enough. Well, you know, I did a little bit, but like now I just think, nah. Because if, if I compel enough people to change for the right reason for the animals, then the knock-on effect of that is going to help the environment isn't it? People stop eating cows, chickens, pigs, and fish, and dairy products. The knock-on effect of that is it helps the environment. And guess what? They're going to stay vegan long-term because they've got the right message to begin with, not 
plant-based sometimes for the environment, stop eating beef for the environment and eat chickens for the environment, eat wild-caught fish for the environment, yeah. reuse leather jackets and work, work around with animal skin, like advertising animal skin like it's a fashion item, wearing a fur coat because I don't want to throw it away and like advertising torture on your body like it's a fashion item, um, you know, that type of thing. So it's about our mentality. Even as vegans, it's about our, our mentality. What's your mentality like towards animals? That's what people would come up to, oh, backyard eggs, backyard eggs. And it's like, well, you're still viewing those animals as a resource, as a slave for you. So they, they, these animals serve you, do they? You, you think these chickens are here to serve you, to plop eggs out of their behind for you all day? And then when you're done with them, what, you drop them off at the shelter, you send them to the slaughterhouse? Animals aren't here for you. Animals are not here for people to exploit. And that's the message you want to give to people. So yeah, I hope that makes sense. And that's why I don't, I've got a no, no nonsense approach. And you know, people who are apologetic, they, they just cringe at the side of me. They cringe at the side of me because I say all the things they don't want to say. Because if they spoke like, like, like think about it, they look at me and they go, they must go, shit, man. He doesn't, he, he doesn't care about making people upset. I, I, I'm constantly trying to apologize to people, you know, for vegans like him. He's making me look bad. He's making me feel uncomfortable. Well, too bad. Too bad. I don't care. I don't care about your feelings. I care about what happens in the slaughterhouses. You know what I mean? And the same type of apologetic people have never sat there to have never sat there to watch Dominion. They haven't watched it from start to end. They don't know what the, the animals are going through. I've seen Dominion a dozen times, more than a dozen times. I edit that video into my content a lot. You know, and when we did the February scary, um, the February scary campaign. All I was looking at was animals being raped and killed. All I was looking at all day was animals being raped and killed and looking at the industries that sexually exploit animals and just getting filled with anger, filled with hatred for the industries that do this. You know, and then I just had such a no-nonsense approach to this after like I always have. But when you when you spend a month researching what actually they actually do to animals, come back and see me then. Come back and see me then and then tell me how, you know, you're gonna pat people on the back for doing fuck all. I'm not, you know, I'm not after that. You think I'm going to walk through a supermarket and just go, oh, yeah, no, that's cool. Like, yeah, oh, you're vegetarian. That's great. No, the cows, um, the cows in the slaughterhouses want you to stop. That's it. And that's us. That's us. That's that's me to those who support the industry. Sobbed all day long through Dominion. Yeah, it's horrific and horrible. And, um, you know, there's there's two there's a few types of people, those who know the truth, who have seen the truth and agree um, with different activism methods. And those who shield themselves from the animal suffering and go around criticizing other activists for speaking up against it. Okay, because they, they haven't faced one second of what the animals go through. They, they haven't faced one second of what they go through. So of course they're going to think you're too extreme, aren't they? Of course they're going to think, oh wow, yeah, these activists give us a bad name. Pfft. Is that what you're thinking about? Your selfish self? We don't care if we've given you a bad name. You know what gives... You know what gives you someone a bad name? If you defend the abuse that's going on to animals, that gives you a bad name. Animal agriculture is... It's bloody Hitler reincarnated times a billion. That, you know, trillions of animals being tortured and killed in murder factories. That dwarfs any human holocaust by a mile. It's, 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 it's an insane, satanic, you know, death ritual going on so people can have a bacon sandwich. All right, and if you dare defend anyone who supports that, you, you it makes you look bad. The activists who speak up against it, they don't look bad. Not not in my eyes, anyway. Not not through if the animals could speak, if the animals could see what was going on here and see who's defending them, that you know, like properly. You know, you think the animals want someone to go? Oh, congratulations, you didn't eat meat on Monday, um, but you ate dairy and eggs and bought leather and all those things. Uh, but the rest of the days you ate more meat, and yeah, great meat, no meat on Monday so what so what like that's not the right mentality that's not the right mentality um so when i see people be being apologetic like that enabling animal abuses I, I just i just feel disappointed i feel disappointed and i look at you like i look at you like you, you're on the wrong side you know you're on the wrong side you're not you're not looking at it through the animal's eyes and that's a massive problem it's a massive problem and not and in not just with meat eaters and you know your normal unaware people, but within the vegan movement, it's a problem. Within the vegan movement, it's a problem, big problem. 
because it's getting so big. You know, you've got people that are just trending or just doing it for the environment or these other reasons, but they haven't faced, you know, what animals go through in a slaughterhouse and, and they need to. They need that reality check. You know, so me personally, even when I first went vegan, I used to look at fur activists and go, oh, that's too much. That's too aggressive. <laughs> you ever seen, you ever seen like foxes and coyotes get skinned alive? Have you, have you seen that? With their skin torn off of their face and they're laying there suffering? Have you seen what that looks like? Then you tell me fur activists are too aggressive. How dare you? How dare me? How dare me for even saying that? Like, thinking that? Like, someone out there with a sign saying, fur trade is death trade. Calling someone a fur hag for wearing the body of an animal. Right? I thought that was too aggressive. But then you see what the animals go through in the fur industry, being anally electrocuted, having their, their fur torn off of their life, their, their con fully conscious body, right, and laying there to suffer without skin, right? That's not too aggressive. But anyway, that was me too. So I, I know, I know. I was like, oh no, sometimes you got to. I, I went down the apologetic path, and that was a big mistake. That was a big mistake. You know why? You know why I did? Because it was easier. Because you got less backlash. You got more love more acceptance, you made people feel comfortable, you know, made people eating meat feel more comfortable, you know, it's a bit nicer, and it's an easier road, but it's the wrong road for me, anyway, because I'd rather it be harder and be and be done right, be done right, said, said correctly, because um, what we fall in the trap of doing is censoring ourselves, hiding the truth from people just to make them feel good or to be liked, just to be, just to be, just to be easy, you know, and the animals lose their voice like that, because we hide what we truly feel, we, we hide what we truly feel about it, you know, so we, we, we're constantly checking ourselves, and oh, better not say that, but that's what I, I truly feel, that animals are being raped for that bottle of dairy, and you're, you're buying it, you're an animal abuser, you know, <laughs> that's what I truly feel, excuse me, um, you know how you just purchased that bottle of dairy there, did you know that a cow was held down in a rack, raped and then killed, and her child was stolen from her, bolt gunned in the skull if they're born a boy? Sorry, but it, not sorry. Yeah, Gary Orofsky, excellent. He, you know, Gary Orofsky, activist, animal liberation activist for many, 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 many years. He's done more speeches than any activist alive. Okay, two two and a half thousand school talks. That's two and a half thousand Q and A's where people were given in plants feel pain. That guy knows what he's talking about. He knows what he's talking about, okay? He's got more experience on the ground than anyone else in the world. If you look up what he thinks you should do as an activist. Don't be a politician. Explain the rapes. Explain the Holocaust. Don't think that calling yourself plant-based uh, plant is going to make people listen. Call yourself an animal liberation activist, a vegan animal liberation activist, okay? Don't pander to people. If you think pandering to people is going to make them take animal abuse seriously, you are mistaken. They're not. They're not. Yeah. People won't change if they're not ready. You can't help that, no matter how you act. If they're ready, they'll appreciate your honesty. If they're not ready, they'll tell you to piss off whether you pander to them or whether you don't. Okay? At least if you don't pander them to them, you've got more of a chance of, of uh, helping that person who's open take it seriously. Because people aren't going to take this, this issue seriously. They're not going to take this movement seriously if you're constantly pandering to people's feelings. What other movement of justice panders to people's feelings over spreading the truth? What other movement does that? Black rights movement? Women's rights movement? Gay rights movement? Who does? Who, which movement does that? Should the animal rights movement pander to people's feelings? Should it? Well, not while I'm around. So, yeah, like, I don't know why all of a sudden, because you're a vegan, you've got to automatically be a machine that doesn't get emotional. It doesn't, you know, oh, you got too emotional there. No shit. I'm sitting here in front of a laptop with pigs being gash tamed and this dude's being a dick. You think I'm going to be nice to him? You know what I mean? What do you think? Does he, does he deserve my respect here? He doesn't respect those animals being screaming for their lives in front of him with this laptop open. 
He doesn't respect those pigs suffering in their own blood, so we can eat a piece of their flesh. Does he really deserve me? To, does he deserve me to go? Oh, excuse me, sir. Politely, can you please stop abusing animals? Like whatever. Like I don't know, but that's um, that's some of the things that like I think about. You know, in the background here, I get a lot of comments from people. I get a lot of um criticism from people. Uh, I got got a lot of criticism from uh, from other vegans. I get a lot of uh, nonsense about my method, about my 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 attitude, and you know, my, I interrupt and you know this and that, and it's like, and and I'm mean, I'm out here defending animals, mate. I'm not out here to bloody you know curl your hair for you or something, give you a back massage, give you a scratch. I'm out here to show you that pigs are being stabbed to death if you didn't have you haven't seen Dominion. It's been out for years now. Um. So, yeah, obviously, like, you know, there's been welfareists for years, been welfare reform for 100 years or something. That hasn't worked, <laughs> you know. I've got more media in one month, in one month, being an unapologetic activist in the UK, all across the media. Dairy cows are being raped. Pigs are being gas chambered. This is a holocaust. Okay, got more media from that. And you might say, well, that was negative media. How do you know what negative media is? Just because the headline's negative? It puts it in people's consciousness and they're sitting around the dinner table going, oh, you hear that vegan activist, Joey Carbstrong, talking about dairy cows are being raped. Oh, really? No. What does he mean? Well, artificial insemination. Let me see a video of it. Oh, wow. Held down in a rack. That's pretty bad. Was he talking about gas chambers? No. Pigs aren't being gas chambered. You know, the, the gas chamber thing. Most people didn't know that pigs are being gas chambered. Every single time I've been on television, millions of people watching, every single time I've talked about pigs being gas chambered, every single radio p appearance I've ever had, I've talked about pigs being gas chambered to death for bacon. When I was on Veganville, Veganville, um, the third episode when I did the speech to the university, if you look at Veganville episode three, I showed gas chambers uh, footage to the students, right? And they said, oh, it wasn't very successful talk. It wasn't successful. Guess what they put in the episode? The, the pigs being gas chambered. So 1 million people watched that last episode. 1.1 million people on mainstream television, BBC One. 1.1 million people, vast majority non-vegans, saw gas chamber footage on TV. First time gas chamber footage has been on TV. Mainstream TV was because I, I used it in my speech in Veganville. And I made a point of throughout Veganville of being unapologetic to say that, you know, that, be, that being like that is ineffective is just patently false to begin with because who the fuck out there is running analysis on how seeds get planted and how they flourish later on? Who the fuck is doing that? I haven't seen the study, you know? I've probably affected uh, people without them even realising. I have farmers coming up to me saying that, you know, I've reduced my meat consumption because of you. I watch your videos. They watch me because they hate me. Then they end up, it ends up getting through to them. I've got people commenting in my comment section going, oh, uh, uh, you, you're wasting your time. This is absolute bullshit. I can't be bothered with this shit. I was like, oh, you're bothered enough to watch and to comment with anger, didn't you? So you, you're seeing the message. They're seeing the message whether they like me or not. It's getting through to them. They don't understand that when they walk away from me and then when they forget about how I made them feel, the message is going to be left there. Next time they look at that bacon. Yeah, I'll talk about it my way. And, you know, there's already enough people doing the same approach in the movement. And, um, if they, you know, you can't use me as an excuse if there's other people being nicer. So what is it? If there's enough people in the movement being nice and you're not vegan yet, you're going to use me as an excuse that you're not vegan, right? Or are you just not going to go vegan? Because you can't use one activist out of one million, right? as an excuse not to go vegan, because you're just looking for an excuse, all right? And if a, if, a, if a vegan is nice to you, guess what? Oh, that guy's a pussy, oh, soft vegan, this and that, like, I don't have to listen to them, Look, listen to them, like, you know, I've heard it all. I've been nice, I got shot down. Been straight out, and people have listened. I've been straight out, oh, you're too aggressive. I've been nice, people have listened. So it's not you, it's them. It depends on the person. And that's what Gary Rofsky was saying too. After He's probably the person who's ran the study the most because he's got most experience talking to large groups of people during his 2,500 speeches that he did over 20 years. Um, so that guy there, 
He, he, he knows. When he does his speech, he might have some people saying, oh, you're too aggressive. But 80% of the, 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 the audience thought his message was great. So what's with those that other 20%? If 80% thought his message was great and that other 20% thought he was too aggressive, was it him? Or was it those people in the, in the audience who were unwilling to take the message no matter how he acted? They already had their backs up no matter what. They don't want to let go of their stake. Do you know what I mean? If you're going to listen to someone about advocacy, right, um, check out Gary Yurofsky. Check him out. Long-term animal rights activist, vegan for the animals AF, and experienced, very experienced. So I think we've got a bunch of people clapping out their windows for the NHS. Um, yeah, you know what? I might do some podcasts soon, do a few more live streams soon. Um, thank you for tuning in, everyone. When's Gary coming back? Let's hope he comes back soon, very soon. God, that would be amazing. A lot of fire under the movement, a lot of fire under the animal agriculture, another one. Um, that would be fantastic. Anyways, guys, thanks for tuning in. Peace out. Thank you.